Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. In this video, I'm going to give you some advice for those of you watching uh, who your house might be haunted. I'm going to help you assess your situation and take the necessary precautions for um, each situation depending on the type of spirit. So, I'm going to uh, let you guys in on the types of spirits uh, that could be haunting your home and what to do about them. Because uh, the first thing you need to do when uh, dealing with a haunted house, if you really want to find out how to get rid of these spirits, you got to know which spirit you're dealing with. So, um, assess the situation. The first uh, type of spirit, of course, is the uh, regular old human spirit. These are uh, spirits of people who have died, maybe on the property or uh, actually in the house, what have you. Now, human spirits, they normally pose a threat that might be more mental than actual physical, but there are times when there are negative human spirits and they can be violent if you allow them to be. They can get physical uh, if they are angry or uh, negative in any way. Um, maybe they weren't good people in life or uh, upon death they may have found, uh, you know, anger in themselves that, you know, they didn't live as long as they thought they would and their life was cut short. Understandable stuff. Um, things you can do with a human spirit. You can either... Ask the spirit to politely leave, which sometimes works, not always, or try to coexist. If the spirit isn't really causing you uh, any harm or isn't making you afraid in your own home, try to just coexist, you know, and just say to the spirit, look, um... This is my house, and if we're going to live together, you gotta you know, abide by my rules. So, um, you know, you don't mess with me and I won't mess with you. Sometimes that works. Now, uh, if you are uh, a psychic, if you find yourself with psychic abilities, try to see if there's anything you can do to help the spirit ascend, uh, into the next life. Um, now... For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I understand. Um, here's what you can do if you have no idea uh, of anything about magic, you don't know anything about magic or energy or spirituality, here's something you can do. <clears throat> so, um, try to go into the house, uh, the part of the house that has the most activity. And you go in, you... Uh, you know, you can sit or stand. Just make sure you just close your eyes and meditate for a little bit. And uh, just, you know, ask the spirit, you know, why are you still here? Do you know that you're dead? You know, and uh, envision in your mind's eye a light. It's a beautiful, pure, bright white light just coming out of the ceiling. And just tell the spirit to go towards it, to go, you know, uh, to move on, to pass on, you know, be with their loved ones, you know, and just help them ascend. Imagine them, well, envision them rising up to the light. And normally you'll feel like a, a light electrical sensation that might make you like your hands, you know, kind of vibrate like this. Uh, and normally when that feeling ends, it should have worked. Um, if you have trouble with doing that or it didn't work, another option is to sage or have your house blessed. Now, with an angry, evil spirit, um, you're going to want to be pretty forceful. Open up all the doors, I mean, not all the doors, <laughs> all the windows in your house, every room, because you're going to want to sage or bless every room. You can even do both. You can sage and bless your house with whatever um, 
blessing or spell that is within your spiritual path or religion. Uh, as long as you believe in it, it'll work. Open up every window in the house. Sage or bless the four corners of each room. And uh, by the end, it should uh, cause the spirit to flee. Of course, starting with the uh, part of the house with the most activity. That way you kind of... Um, you repel them away from their home base so they they're in a spot where they don't have their energy established that way you disrupt their energy by blessing or saging you know a negative entity you're basically just trying to get under their skin as much as possible and make them want to leave it should work with a human spirit it doesn't always sometimes there are powerful negative human spirits um if you have a, a knowledge of crystals, quartz, so you can take little pieces of quartz, place them around the room, and they're really good at sucking up the energy of the room, especially negative energy. Just make sure that you sage or bless or cleanse them after you're done. <clears throat> a little added measure. So those are the few things that you can do with human spirits. All right, now that we uh, covered human spirits, we're going to talk about the next type of spirit, a poltergeist. Uh, poltergeist is German for noisy ghost. It is a manifestation or um, manifestations of a, a person or more than one person's negative energy like stress, anger, sadness, negative emotions, negative thought forms. It basically balls up inside the person and then it gets unleashed and becomes a spirit of its own. It takes on kind of like a life of its own. It's not a spirit of a person who died. It's actually your energy, uh, negative energy that has become something nasty. Now, um, this is another one of the spirits that it poses a threat that's more mental than physical. Um, if the person who created the poltergeist is mad, say, let's say at you, you might find yourself the target of this poltergeist because they are sending their negative energy towards you. So when it comes to this, you need to find the person who's doing this. And um, therapy. Therapy works, you know, because it actually gets the person to um, spill their guts, spill their emotions, and tell someone about what they're feeling instead of bottling it up inside and letting it fester. Um, even... Uh, say the person is your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, if you feel like it, they're the cause, get them to talk to you. Is there anything wrong in your life? Get the, try to get them to open up. That is a good way. Um, diet and exercise routines, ways to burn off excess energy. That way the poltergeist energy, the psychokinetic energy won't be as strong because you're basically working hard and kind of exhausting yourself trying to actually be better. You know, and usually, you know, yeah, you might be sore, you know, from exercise, but you do feel good inside once you exercise. You know, you feel like you're really doing something good for your health. Uh, and other ways to distress like herbal teas, um, listening to, um, sound, uh, sound effects like, uh, waterfalls or beach or, uh, rain, you know, with some noise canceling headphones. Um, if you're feeling exhausted, maybe take naps throughout the day when you can, you know, just to re-energize yourself. Um, you know, uh, whatever you do to de-stress, draw color, watch TV, you know, just uh, de-stress. And it usually should make the um, the activity go away. Uh, and it's also good to um, sage and bless your house in general when it comes to this because it's not an actual entity, but it's always good to make sure that the uh, energy around um, the affected area is not feeding this psychokinetic energy. It's not draining any negative energy that may be out in the environment. So those are ways to get rid of a poltergeist if that should be the case. Uh, the next type of spirit is a um, residual energy. Residual energy is concentrated energy that has been absorbed 
usually buy like a house or sometimes um, houses sit on crystal quarries, so like quartz. If you were to um, do something around quartz without cleansing it and uh, say you move out of the house 50 years later and yet you still keep this here, the new owners might start seeing things that you did around the house in life and think you're a ghost. But no, it's really the quartz crystal projecting the energy that was one, that it absorbed, the only energy it has. It's like having a movie played over and over again, but a, like one clip. So if something you used to do was like pace around the house, around this crystal, and it, it kind of helped you, you know, think, it would absorb that. And someone might see you 50 years later, you know, pacing back and forth, and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a ghost, but no one died in the house. It is really just the crystal that was never cleansed. And now it just constantly replays the energy in which it absorbed, which may have been a small amount, but it was enough to project. Quartz crystals especially are perfect projectors of energy. They take energy inside themselves and they multiply it by like two times what it is, sometimes even more. It depends on how much energy it is given. With things like that, saging or blessing your house, that that's it. And... Uh, if it's um, a crystal that maybe has been left behind, say, uh, sage and bless that too. Cleanse it, you know. That way it's not projecting any more of the same thing. It now has new energy and it shouldn't, you know, be playing anything. It's kind of like wiping the memory off a, a computer or a camera. Uh, residual hauntings pose no threat whatsoever. It, they might give you a startle, but um, they cannot harm you, and uh, it's just neutral energy, so it can't really do anything to you. It, it can't help, but it can't hinder either. Alright guys, now we get down to the more serious type of spirit that could be in your house, the uh, last but not least, demonic. Demonic spirits are entirely made out of dense, negative energy, completely evil. They hate us. They hate humans. They hate animals. They hate anything that gives off positive energy. They hate... They just hate. And they tend to feed off negative energy. They normally, in a household, like a family unit, they will try to get people within the house fighting so that they can feed off the negative energy, the negative emotions. Uh, they will target the most vulnerable person of the house, which can be children, which can be maybe a grandparent, like the elderly. Um, also, people under a great amount of stress, sadness, or building up a lot of anger, they tend to go for those people too. And what they hope to do is break down your aura, which is the magnetic field that our bodies give off to fend ourselves off from negative energies or spirits. They're hoping to break that up because negative emotions tend to crack it so that they can slip in and possess you. And their goal, once they possess you, is to get you to commit self-destructive behaviors, uh, ruin your relationships with family, friends, um, romantic relationships. They're hoping to burn every bridge so that no one will be able to help you. And they will want you to toil away in your own bitterness and sadness until you kill yourself. And once they uh, have fully succeeded in getting you to kill yourself... They are going to take over your spirit and command you until some other poor soul within the same uh, environment comes along so that they can do the same thing. Now, when someone moves into a, a house at first, the demon has no connection to this uh, family or person whatsoever. Therefore, they will probably uh, first rely on any human spirits that they may have, like, have held captive in the house. Uh, and manipulate them to cause fear so that they can um, do the rest. So they can use human spirits to kind of scare the hell out of you and therefore causing you uh, mental anguish and break your aura so that they can slip in and do the rest of the harm and destruction. Um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's very serious. Um, 
Here are my precautions and measures that you should take if you find out that you have a demonic entity in your home. Be extremely cautious. Keep your spiritual guard up. Try not to uh, uh, think negatively. Try not to let any negativity build up. If you got a problem with someone, you know, in the family, just say it. You, no need to start a fight. You know, just try and get everything out in the open. Try to keep your thoughts and your actions pure so that the um, the demon has nothing to feed off of. Therefore, it will not target you. Um, do not antagonize the spirit. Do not try to challenge it. If it's attacking a member of your family, do not be a hero and say, why don't you attack me instead? Do not do that because that will be so much worse uh, it could do more harm than good because, as I said, then they'll target you, they'll break your aura, they'll possess you, and when they possess you, you may lose control. You may go, like, just in the head. You may just go black and you won't remember a thing and all of a sudden you wake up and, you know, your family has hit marks and bruises all over them and you're like, did I do that? And they're like, uh-huh. So, do not antagonize, do not challenge. And be extremely careful. Try to contact a demonologist or maybe if you're of the Christian faith, maybe a member of a church or a group that is associated with your um, spiritual path or religion to help. Go to the professionals. If you don't know what you're doing, go to, go to the professionals. Um, if you find that there are groups that charge money for you them to come to your house, do not go with them. If they ask for gas money, obviously if they're far away, you know, that's fine. But if they actually charge like a huge amount just to come to your house, like a hundred bucks or something, you'll know that they're fake. Most um, professionals will not charge you a thing. Their goal is to help. They're not here to make money. So uh, do not be afraid of turning to others for help. You know, just find help where you can. They're here to help. And there are people there to, who can help you. You cannot move in these types of situations. You cannot just pack up and move to another house. The demon, once it has a firm connection to the family, will follow you. It will attach itself to you. And no matter where you go you are going to be followed by this. There's going to be no running away from it. Even if you go and live in the woods, it's probably going to follow you there. So the only clear way to deal with this is keep the family in a close, tight unit. Uh, when you guys sleep, if there's like a whole family in the house, try to sleep together in the same room. Sleep as a unit. If they need to go to the bathroom, you know, use the buddy system. Just to make sure that nothing bad happens until help arrives at least. Do this until you can at least contact someone who knows what they're doing and, you know, get them out there to try and help you. Now, this is a firm warning that I give to anyone watching this and that I give to anyone who asks about this subject. Do not, and I repeat capital letters, do not... In any way, shape, or form, try to get rid of these on your own if you are not knowledgeable about anything of the spiritual nature or demons. If you do not know what you are doing, you could make the situation a lot worse. You could get hurt. You could get killed. Who knows what other situations could happen? And there have been many stories. Very, very bad so, unless you feel like you actually have a firm amount of knowledge to actually try this yourself and try to do the blessing or saging yourself, which I do not recommend, be very careful. Do your research. Ask for advice from professionals who've handled situations like this, demonologists, things like that, uh, churches, things like that. Just, you don't want to be, you want you don't want to be harmed, just like you don't want your family to be harmed. 
And how are you going to protect your family if you're the one harmed or killed? Um, if it's a possession situation, if the demon has successfully attached itself and possessed a member of the family, be extremely careful around this person. They are unpredictable. The demon, when agitated, can take over the person like that. They won't even know it. They will not remember a thing about their actions. And if you, uh, normally if the person is far off enough, even the mention of help will get the person to be very skittish, um, paranoid. It will get them to act uh, aggressive or defensive about the topics. They might even try to harm you to stop you from uh, getting help because the demon doesn't want you to. Um, how do you know if someone's possessed? Behavior that's out of character, um, you know, change in behavior. They're doing odd things that they've never done before. They're acting strange. It almost seems like there's, you know, two people in them, you know. They're acting very different out of character. Um, paranormal activity seems to increase once they enter a room. Uh, cold spots, maybe items floating around. Uh, there have been p uh, times when the person's voice has actually changed and their eyes have turned black. At that point, that's when it becomes severe. The longer a person is possessed, the harder it is to get rid of. It's like putting super glue on your hand. If you don't try and get it off right away, most likely you you never will. And the, the longer you let it dry, the harder it's going to be to get off. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep your family in check and you're aware of how they're feeling and how they're doing. Um, you know, make sure everyone's all right. Make sure no one's fearing for their life, you know, to where they're like, I'm doing things that I don't normally do and I don't remember a thing of them. What's going on? Especially in that case, you're going to want to seek professional help. It's not advised to do uh, an exorcism on your own when you have no knowledge. Exorcisms can be very dangerous. They have been deadly because the demons, when they're trying to, uh, to when they're expelled from a person's body, th everything in their body is clenched up and like stressed to the point of it's like almost impossible to bear. And that's why a lot of people after exorcisms will be sore. They might have bruises on them that they don't know where they came from. Because they push the body to the brink of stress. The demon is essentially like, well, if I can't have this body, neither can the person who already had it, you know. And that way they can collect a soul when they're expelled. So be very cautious. You don't want to toy around with your loved one's lives. This is serious business and it can be extremely dangerous. So make sure that you seek professional help. Do I know anything about dealing with demons? I've had a small run-in with demons to where I was able to bind them, but I was not able to cast them from a person's body. I did a lot of research and I consulted different uh, professionals. You know, a lot of them advised me, oh, you know, maybe they should seek help. Well, I'm like, well, they won't. And uh, they, they weren't a member of a church. They're, they're not Christian. They were pagan. But I was able to, with um, a, a powerful ritual, able to at least bind the demon underneath like the house but away from my friend therefore it would not it would not cause any more harm and he said that he felt a headache through the whole thing and he kind of blacked out a little so i may have a little knowledge but i would not consider me a professional 
in uh, anything concerning demons or uh, extremely hostile spirits of the sort. So I would go to groups, professional groups, that actually have lots of experience in this. But those are the necessary precautions that you need to take if you're dealing with a demonic entity. All right, guys. Um, that pretty much sums it up. Those are the types of spirits that people uh, can deal with in a home on a you know day-to-day. -day. Those are the precautions to take. Those are the proper courses of action that I suggest to um, anyone who asks. And uh, people do say it works most of the time. Uh, and if it doesn't work, you know, do your research, try something else, or you can ask me if there's, you know, another idea that I can have. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Please subscribe to my channel and share the hell out of this video. Hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my new videos. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below. Thank you guys, and be safe.